Hello everyone. Um, in the previous session, we have learnt about data integrity. Now we will be talking about data compression when we are trying to store huge amounts of data on HDFS. So, while talking about uh, compression, what exactly are the benefits of compression? We know compression reduces the file size. So, the first thing is it reduces the space needed in order to store the file. The second one, because the file size has reduced, it will be easy for us or it takes less amount of time when we are trying to transfer it over the network. Right? We also know this, whenever we are trying to send huge amounts of data, we try to reduce the file size, we do the compression and we transfer it. Right? So, these are the major benefits of data compression. When we are dealing with large volumes of data, both the savings can be significant. So, why he is mentioning this? We might argue computer space has become very cheap these days, that is ok, even if it is occupying more amount of space, I do not mind. But when we are working with big data, we are working with terabytes and exabytes of data. Even if you are trying to st save gigabytes of memory, that is a considerable amount of save. Right? So, he is talking about big, big data applications. So, in such cases, compression gives you space saving as well as time saving. Both are significant when we are dealing with huge amounts of data. Various compression algorithms are there when we are talking about uh, big data compressions. These are the four compression algorithms which are popular. Other algorithms are also there. So, I just listed out some of the important features of these algorithms, just go through them quickly. While talking about these algorithms, I will be, con I want you to concentrate on this word not splittable, right? I will be talking about this a little later. Once you finish seeing through all the features of these algorithms, I will be talking something on splittable when related to compression also concentrate on this point. Yeah. Now, I will talk about what exactly do we mean by splittable of uh, compression techniques. Uh, compression techniques supports splittable or not. We will discuss much of these things whenever we learn compression techniques under Hadoop or HDFS. What do I mean by this is, we know HDFS is trying to divide a huge file into blocks and the default block size is 128 MB, right? This is the default block size. We will continue with the same default size. It is configurable, but for our discussion, we go with 128 MB as the block size. Whenever my file is split into blocks, that is my original file. Now, say for example, I have my file which is compressed and the compressed file size is 1 GB and I want to store it onto HDFS. By default nature of HDFS, what it will do? It will try to divide your file into blocks. Now, what type of file are we trying to store? A compressed file, a zip file. Can a zip file be splitted and stored across the network? Can I identify which one is the first block, which one is the second block? Do I have any markers on that, those blocks wherever it is split? Because HDFS does not have much logic, 128 MB, it just makes it as a chunk. So, how do I identify? Does my compression algorithm have markers for block beginning and block ending? If yes, we say the compression algorithm is supporting splittable. Otherwise, if there are just random chunks, we say the compression algorithm is not supporting splittable nature of the files. Right? Now, just go back to the algorithms. What did we see here? The first algorithm compressed data is not splittable and it is not suitable for MapReduce jobs. So, if the file is compressed using this zzip algorithm, it will not support this splittability. Even though the file is of huge size, the compressed file. Now, I am not talking about the original file. I am talking about the compressed file being of huge size. HDFS by default just breaks them at every 128 MB. So, this algorithm 
does not put any markers on those splitted files. Those will be randomly broken into pieces. So, we say this algorithm does not support splittable nature of the file, right? This one compressed data is splittable. This algorithm compressed data is splittable. So, depending on our requirement, we have to select which compression algorithm is to be used. Now, all compression algorithms, they exhibit space time trade-off. You want more space saving or you want more time saving, which one do you want? That is a trade-off the user has to decide, right? In order to have this one, uh, just see what is the trade-off. Faster compression and decompression speeds usually come at expense of smaller space savings. So, I want my compression algorithm to give me time saving, then space saving will be little bit. I want more space saving, it will be uh, the file gives you less amount of time saving. Which one do you want? In order to decide, the client has 9 levels for this trade off, wherein whenever you are trying to work with the compression algorithm, hyphen 1, if I specify hyphen 1, it means you go for optimizing the speed. Even if it is taking much space, I am okay with it, go for optimizing the speed of uh, the transfer or compression. On the other hand, minus 9 or hyphen 9 means optimize it for space. I do not mind how much time it is taking, but I want to save the space. So, these are the 9 levels of compression trade offs. Which one do you want, right? Say, for example, I have given zzip, I am using this algorithm to compress my file, and what is the trade off I have given? hyphen 1. What do we mean by this? We are trying to optimize the time, not the space saving, right? So, likewise, you can specify any level between 1 to 9. It, it comes with a hyphen, right? And compression and input splits. Just now, I spoke about when you are trying to consider the compressed data, which will be processed by MapReduce, we need to understand whether the compression algorithm is supporting splittable nature or not, right? So, the same example, if there is a compressed file whose size is 1 GB and with HDFS default block size of 128 MB, the file will be stored in 8 blocks and a MapReduce job using this file as input will create 8 input splits, right? By default nature of map reduce, how many number of splits are there? Those many number of map tasks will also be created. I, in my example, 1 GB file will be maintained as 8 blocks. So, the map task also gets replicated into 8, one for each block, right? Now, in such cases, the, if at all, suppose the file is compressed using this algorithm, gzip algorithm and in such cases, gzip does not support splitting. So, the file gets randomly chunked at 128 MB and MapReduce cannot try to read from an arbitrary point because the files are randomly or arbitrarily broken into pieces. MapReduce cannot work with such files. It needs to have markers. So, in such case, what will happen? People might say you go for changing another compression algorithm. No, I want to work with same algorithm, gzip algorithm only I want to use and I want to process the file using MapReduce. What is the alternative or what will happen? Though the file is broken into 8 blocks, single map task will be processing them one after the other. So, you are not going to have the parallel execution. Because the file is compressed using gzip algorithm, which does not support splitting, even though HDFS is randomly dividing it into blocks, you cannot have uh, as many number of map tasks as there are number of blocks. In such cases, when the algorithm does not support splitting, 
single map task has to process each and every block losing the nature of distributed computing or parallel computing. This is the only alternative. And gzip also uses something called as a deflate. What do we mean by deflate? It tries to store all these blocks which are randomly broken into blocks in a sequence. So, the only option left out for MapReduce is a single map task has to process this entire series of blocks, right? This is happening when, when my compression algorithm is not supporting splitting. When it is supporting, what will happen? There will be separate markers at the beginning of the block as well as at the end of the mark. So, the map reduce can easily identify which one to process, which one to not to process, all these things. It will happen parallelly. Eight blocks are there, eight map tasks will be doing it parallelly, right? Now, on the other hand, which algorithm is supporting splitability? I have shown in the list, the, I have shown only four algorithms. GZIP is not supporting this bzip2 is supporting splitability. Now, using compression in MapReduce, if the input files are compressed, they will be decompressed automatically when MapReduce is reading them and the file name, it identifies whether it is a normal source file or whether it is a compressed file. How does it know? The file name has got an extension. It sees the extension of the file and identifies whether it is a normal source file or a compressed file. Also, it also reads the codec to use. Codec is coding and decoding. It uses the specific algorithm by seeing the extension which compression algorithm is used. The corresponding decompression algorithm will be identified. Right? In order to compress the output of a MapReduce job, the output from MapReduce job is to be stored. If I want to compress that one, we need to set the property MapReduce dot output dot file output format dot compress. This property should be set to true if you want the output from MapReduce to be compressed. And also, which algorithm should I use? You have the choice as a user whether you want the output to be compressed, yes or no, and which algorithm is to be used for both compression and decompression. And also, suppose I do not want to set the configuration file, I want to write it in my Java program. You have these two options file output format dot set compress output job, comma true and file output format dot set output compressor class which algorithm should be used that also you can specify when you are writing your MapReduce code. Either you can set it in the configuration file or you can write the code in your MapReduce program. Two options. The program is run over compressed input. It is not necessary to use the same compression format as the output. This is the best advantage which HDFS offers. Suppose I am using gzip algorithm for compressing the input file. I need not use the same algorithm for compressing the output. I can change it, right? If you are emitting sequence files for your output, you can set MapReduce dot output dot file output format compress dot type. Say for example, sometimes it is possible you might get multiple output files. For every output file, you can set whether you want it to compress or not. Suppose I am generating 5 outputs, you have the option to set 1, 3, 5 to be compressed, 2 and 4 not to be compressed, you can. And also you can say which one, which algorithm or which codec is to be used for every output. The, what is the default size for compression? The default is a record which compresses individual records. Changing things to block, you can change it. The compression happens for groups of records which is recommended because block compression is better than individual record compression. And 
compressing map output suppose i don't want to go for input compression i don't want to go for output compression but map method leaves some intermediate output which will be maintained on the local drive and once they are passed on to the reducer and once the final output is generated this intermediate output will be flushed out so this intermediate output has to transfer between the location where the map has executed from there to where the reducer is getting executed so in such cases this intermediate output can be compressed right this is one more option input file is not compressed output file is not compressed but the user has a choice of compressing the intermediate outputs generated by the map task so the map output is written to disk and transferred across the network to the reducer so whichever algorithm you want you can use one of them this is just to gain the uh, performance of compressing the intermediate output before i transfer it to a reducer rest of the things suppose the input file is small your output is small your intermediate outputs are small you can even avoid compression it all depends on the file size and whether the user is wanting space saving or time saving accordingly we can select compression options thank you